Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sunday once again. I'm so glad y'all are here, ready to join your day, because we're going to talk about another one of the big Bible heroes that we hear about in the Old Testament. And this story actually picks up after last week's Bible story. Last week we talked about Noah and Noah's Ark, and how the story of the great flood and the promise and the covenant that came out of that that God gave Noah is still seen today. And we're going to learn about another one today. We're picking up the story about 300 years after Noah's time. And during that time, the earth has, has repopulated. There's all of these tribes. And you can follow the line in Genesis. You can follow the line from Noah's son Shem all the way to today's Bible character, which his name is Abram when we meet him. Abram's story can be found in Genesis chapter 12 through 25. And if you want to see a story of one of those Bible grades, you get to see most of Abram's life, Abraham's life as he becomes in those chapters. I really suggest you read it. But we pick up with Abraham. He's 75 years old, and he has no children. Abraham lives this nomadic life. He moves around a lot, but he stays in one area. And this is when God calls him. At 75 years old, God calls him and says, I am going to make a great nation of you. Your descendants are going to number more than the dust on the earth. Now, Abraham and his wife, Sarah, had no children. Like I said, Abraham was 75. That's pretty old to be having a child. Sarah, his wife, was around 65. That's very old to be carrying a child. And they, they trusted God's word when it came to them. When God spoke to them, they trusted what he said. And they trusted his promise. And he said, if you, want, if, if, if you want this promise, then you need to pick up your lives and you need to follow me. It sounds very similar to something that Jesus said to his disciples, doesn't it? He said, follow me. And he sent them to this land called Canaan. And he told them once they got there that this is the land that your descendants will inhabit. I will make them a great nation. Reminds them again of his promise. Well, the years go by, and Abraham and Sarah, they, they struggle with this promise that God's given them because they want to believe it. But the years keep ticking by, and that clock keeps going around, and nothing's happening. So they get discouraged, and they lose their way a little bit. But every time God came back and spoke to them, they listened. And finally, when Abraham... His name changes along the way from Abram to Abraham. God changes it to mean father of many nations. Abraham is spoken to again when he's around 99 years old. And God says to him, you will have a son. You're going to have a child. Your wife is going to give birth. And he says, oh my gosh, I'm 100 years old. She's 90. How is that going to be? But it happened, boys and girls. Sarah gave birth to a beautiful baby boy named Isaac. And now God had told him that his descendants are going to number more than the dust in the earth and more than the stars in the sky. That's a lot, right? We have no idea in our worldly vision of how many stars there are in the sky. We can send up as many space shuttles and satellites and space probes as we want to. But we will never be able to count the number of stars in the sky. There are far too many. But God knows how many there are. And he knew what he was promising Abraham when he made this promise. And Abraham has one child, a son named Isaac, right? Did he fulfill the promise there? No, one child wasn't the stars in the sky, right? But what happened is Abraham had children, and his children had children, and their children had children, and their children had children, and so on and so on and so on. And eventually, down Abraham's line, you will find this guy named Jesus. You will find Jesus, God's son who came to earth, is born out of Abraham's line. And Jesus... We know he lived, he walked this earth, and then he died. And when he died, he took all of the sins of the world. Everyone's sin that was existing that day when Jesus was there, and everyone after that who believes in him and follows him, he took all of their sins on himself when he died on that cross. And in doing so, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers who follow him and ask for his forgiveness and, and ask to be a part of him, right? Those of us who actively try to follow Jesus every day and follow in his steps have been made into his kingdom. And more than that, we've become a part of Jesus' family. That family that God promised to Abraham. So no, Isaac didn't number that more than the stars in the sky, but boys and girls, you today, you are part of Abraham's family, and you, as a believer and a follower of Jesus, are fulfillment of that promise that God made to Abraham. God's words, as we discussed last week, God's word is so full of his promises to us. They are all throughout this book. And I hope and I pray that you boys and girls, as you get older, as your readers, that you make a habit of being in God's word, 
of reading it daily, to learn about what he has said to you, what he has promised to you, the things that we are supposed to do to follow him, they're all right in here. It's an instruction manual for us. But those promises that are in there, and in the pages of the Bible, you can find that God has promised to always be faithful. He has promised to never leave you. He has promised to love you no matter what. He has promised to always be your help, your comfort, your protection. And more than that, he has promised to always keep his promises. It's all right here in the Bible. And I pray that you, you dive into it and you'll find the scripture passages of all those promises to us. Boys and girls, will you bow your heads, fold your hands, close your eyes, and say a prayer with me? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your many promises. We trust that you will always be with us, that you will love us, comfort us, and help us. May we always remember this as we walk with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. If you don't hear anything else this morning, I want you to hear and remember that God is able. God is able, right? Whether anybody else or anything else is, God is always able. And as I often do, I want to remind us of the basics. When we stick to the basics, everything's okay. And everything really does run by the basics. Like the basics of temperature, right? You know, uh, that's something that we've all recently thought about. What is temperature anyway? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was about, yeah, it was about 68 when I woke up too, you know, this morning. But, uh, Temperature is a measure of molecular motion. That's what it is. We talk about it all the time, but sometimes we don't think about it. And we do that with many things in our lives, I believe. We talk about them, but we don't think about what they really are. So of a lot of the molecules were moving pretty slow week before last, right? So of what is faith? We're going to talk about faith this morning. We're going to talk about Father Abraham. Susan read from Genesis chapter 17 about Abraham. We, we, we talk about faith, and we have the definition of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. You know, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But what is it when you really put it into action or you really use it? I think it's real simple, really. Like I said, I think most things are simple. We complicate them. Faith, I believe, is simply trust in God. And that trust is backed up with or substantiated by, we might say, our minds. That is our reason. And our actions, right? Our actions, what we do, our experience. That's what faith is. And faith is very, very real. Faith, faith sometimes gets confused with belief. Don't make that mistake. There's a difference between faith and belief. Faith in God, trust in God is real and true and something that God gives everybody. We'll talk about that a, a little bit more in just a second. Belief doesn't have anything to do with truth necessarily. Many, many people, in fact, I would argue that every one of us in here believes something that's not true. I don't know what it is for you, 
And I, I don't know what it is for me either. If I knew what it was for me, I wouldn't believe it anymore, right? But belief doesn't have anything to do with the truth necessarily. There are, as I've pointed out, there are many, many people who believe wrong things, including most of, most of us. Faith is true, it's real, just like the only reality is God and the kingdom of God. That's reality, and that's what Jesus demonstrated, and that's what Abraham demonstrated. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's epistle to the church in Rome, the fourth chapter, and we will start with verse 13 and read to the end of the chapter. Consider the word of the Lord. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise might rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who, who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. That's what Susan just read in Genesis chapter 17. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith and he gave glory to God, being convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now, the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespass, and he was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Please be in prayer with me and for me. God, God who created the heavens and the earth and all that's in them. God that created us to have absolute dependence upon you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our salvation. Amen. This is one of those passages that Paul writes that is 
chunked full of stuff, but I'm going to keep it focused today or try to keep it focused on the fact that God is able. God is able, just like it said there. God is able to do what God promised to do. And if we all just remember that and live that out, then we're okay. You know, everybody has faith. Did you know that? Everybody has faith. But the question is, is what everybody has faith in, all right? What does everybody have faith in? Is it in God or is it in something else? Now, this particular passage there in verse 13 starts out that the promise that he would inherit the earth didn't come through the law but through faith. You see, we have to, we, we, we have to keep we have to keep things in order, and sometimes that's hard to do for us, right? But uh, when Abram was around, there wasn't any law. The law didn't come about for about another 400 years after Abraham was alive, right? See, the law says, or people who are adherents to the law, you know, this is, this is the old faith and works dichotomy, you know, if you do this, you get this. And that's the way works work. It's just, it's just like each and every one of us that, are, that, that, are, that still have a job, right? I know, I know some of you are of you know, retired, but for those of us who still have a job, you get paid wages for your job, right? You do something, you get, you get, you get your wages. That's not the way faith in God works. It's a gift from God. Abraham didn't follow any particular code of ethics. He was just blessed by God, and he believed God. God made the promise, and God was able to carry through the promise. Now, I said a minute ago, I'd say something, too, about uh, God giving all of us faith. God first made the promise to Abraham, to Abram, actually, in Genesis chapter 12, he told him that he would be the father of nations at that particular point. In Romans, a few chapters down here, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, 3, it says God gives everybody a measure of faith. So again, everybody has faith. It's a gift from God. We all get it. And, the, and again, the, the, the academic question is, is what do we put our faith in? What do we put our faith in? Abram put his faith in God because he knew God was able to do what he said he would do. And then it says... God who gives life to the dead and calls things into existence. Or in some translations it says calls things that are not as though they were. As though they were. Hmm. Interesting. And of course that all ties in with Genesis chapter 1 when God created things, but it also specifically is talking about Abram and Sarai. There in Genesis chapter 17 that Susan read, Abram was uh, getting on up in years, you know? Or as some of us might say, he already had one foot in the grave, right? So, uh, so he's the dead, 
that God is referring to there at that particular moment. He and Sarah, because she was past childbearing age. But, God, but that's nothing for God. God is able. God created the entire universe and everything we see. God gave Abraham his faith. Now, this deal about calling things that aren't as though they were, you see, that's, that, that ties, again, right in there with chapter 17 because, again, in chapter 17, that's where Abram's name gets changed to Abraham. And that's where Sarai's name gets changed to Sarah. What's going on there? What's going on there? Abram means exalted father. Abraham means the father of many, of many. Just as Sarai means exalted, actually exalted princess. But Sarah means the mother of many. And there she is, right? 90 years old. Who'd have thunk it? It'd be on the cover of the Inquirer, right? For sure. <laughs> if it was, you know, if it, if it happened today, you know, you'd be standing there in the, in the checkout line and uh, look over at the Inquirer and, you know, right under the place where the space aliens had had a conference with somebody, you know, there, there, be, there it is. 90-year-old woman gives birth, right, to triplets, probably, or, some, or, or something like that. But the point is, the point is, again, God is able to do what God said God would do. And it says there, that was, that was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness. Righteousness. He was righteous because he trusted God. He trusted God. That's what it's all about. Even though, you know, again, there you are. Of, and if you read the whole story and everything else, of course, you know, he got impatient and, and uh, did some other things that uh, weren't that great to do. Bottom line, bottom line, he trusted God. He trusted God in everything that he did. And it said, because he believed that God was able to do what God had promised. He was able to do what God had promised. Now, I said that God gave us all a measure of faith. And in fact, Paul said that, like I said a few minutes ago, in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, an, an allotment is made to each of us of faith. Abraham used his allotment and grew it and grew it. Now there's a point, see, it, 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 since we are in the second Sunday of Lent, and, we're, and we are getting ready for our Lord's crucifixion and resurrection. And we're talking about God giving life to the dead. Of course, he, he certainly gave life to the dead in the, in the case of Jesus when he was raised from the dead. But there was, you all remember there in uh, Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17. This is right after. This is right after Peter says, well, you know, if somebody sins against me, how many times should I forgive them? You know? Should I forgive them seven times? You know? And Jesus said, you know, seven times seven times or 70 times seven times, depending upon how you look at the translation. That's... Uh, that's Luke 17, 4. But Luke 17, 5. You know what Luke 17, 5 says? I'll tell you. It, sa it says, it, you know, I, I, I know some of you are wondering. Of, it says, and the disciples said to him, Lord, increase our faith. Hmm. You know, so 
the implication there is, or one of the implications there is, is that it takes a lot of faith to keep, to keep forgiving people, right? And I'd say that's probably true. But again, we have to what? Trust God, because God is able. Y'all remember how Jesus answered that question? He said, to, in, in Luke's version, he says to his disciples, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, right, you would say to this mulberry tree, be plucked up and cast into the sea, and it would happen. Now, that's an interesting answer, isn't it? Jesus had a lot of interesting answers. That's an interesting answer for the disciples when they, say to, when they ask him to increase their faith. What's he saying? Have you thought about that? It's like that Brill Cream commercial. Y'all remember Brill Cream? I know some of you remember it, but you don't need it anymore, right? But, uh, but uh, <laughs> the Brill Cream, Brill Cream's little, little, little ditty, their little elevator speech, their motto was, what? A little dabble do ye. A little dabble do ye. Right? That's what Jesus was telling his disciples. A little dabble do ye. If you take what you've got and use it, that's all you need. That's all you need. Or maybe not, maybe it's wrong to say that's all you need, but if you take what you got and you use it, you can do amazing things. And if you keep using it, it, it did say that Abraham's faith grew of then you get stronger in it, and it gets bigger, and it is more. That's how you increase your faith. You use what you've got. You use what you've got. That's all it takes. So, another way to look at it is like this window over here. You see? And you can't, y'all can't see, but I can see this, this, the windows in the door here. Now, the windows in the door are considerably smaller than the windows that are along the side of the building here. But that's kind of how faith is, too. You can see through it. You can see through this little window up here, or you can see through that large window but you've still got to look out the window to see. And there are situations where you might have a very, very small window, but you can still see what's out there if you look through it, if you look through it. And again, that's what, that's what I believe Jesus was telling his disciples. He said, if you use the little bit of faith you have, you can do amazing things. Matthew said it in, in, uh, in, in Matthew chapter 21. He's, he, he, said it, he said it different. Matthew says, Jesus says what? If you say to this mountain, be, be picked up and cast into the sea, it'll happen. It'll happen again if you use it. But you have to act as if it's going to work. Which takes us back to Abram, right? When God said, get up and go from here to a place that I'm going to show you, he did it. He did it. He put the action with it. And when God said, take your son there, your only son, Isaac, and go up there on Mount Moriah and... Uh, and use him for a sacrifice, Abraham did it, right? He didn't question. He got the wood, he got the fire, he got the knife, he got the kid, and he headed up there, right? He headed up there. Why? Because it tells us there, too, that Abraham knew. He knew. See, again, 
Faith is knowing. It's knowing. It's not a belief. It's a knowing. Knowledge is true. Knowledge is true. Faith is true. Belief may not be true. Abraham knew, and he knew that if God really did have him go ahead and kill Isaac, that's okay. God could raise him from the dead, just like God raised Jesus from the dead. So, so if you want to have faith like Abraham, be certain that God can, is able to do what God promised. Amen?